It's a Gibson SG standard, isn't it? Oh, look, hello. Where's all the neck dive gone? <laughs> There's no neck dive there, is it? This is a cheap Gibson. That's an oxymoron, isn't it? It's definitely what they call a player guitar, this. Gibson SG 200. Heavily modified. <laughs> You'll see what I mean when I show you. It hasn't really worked, to be honest with you, and I think it looks horrible. To Gibson SG. It's a, you know, beautiful thing. Hello everyone, good to see you. Welcome to the Guitaristas. Today, by popular request, I'm going to start looking at some of my collection. Um, yeah, I've got a few guitars, you might have noticed. I've got a few amps as well. We might even, might even throw some of those in as well. But yeah, I've got some, I got some great guitars that I don't often get a chance to play because more often than not we're got something new in and I'm you know trying to learning to play stuff on it and that. So a lot of the good stuff didn't get a lot of playtime. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to well, firstly, yeah, show you guys. I mean, there's been a lot of requests for this. You know, oh, let's see your SGs, Cole, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I thought it would be a good, a good opportunity to indulge you and indulge myself at the same time because it gives give me an opportunity to, uh, to have a little play of some of them as well. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start, it's, it's going to run over several weeks this because I've got a few, obviously. I'm not going to stop at the SGs. We're going to do, well, we'll do all the stuff in the back room that you haven't even seen and there's a lot of guitars here and some tasty amps. So I'm going to try and get into some of it you know it's not going to be one of those the collection films where you see six guitars and then that's it you know the other 300 <laughs> stay out of sight in their cases no 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 well firstly i haven't got 300 guitars i've probably got at any one time about 65 so yeah i'm i'm sort of buying and selling guitars all the time but i've got a core a hardcore collection of stuff that that you haven't seen i rarely get a chance to play and um, I'm going to share some of that with you over the coming weeks. Let's cut the waffle. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to. I'm going to have a lot of guitars to get through. So we'll do some now, and then we'll run over several weeks. Don't know how many. Not you know consecutively. We'll, we'll mix it up with guitar reviews and stuff. So probably over the next couple of months, you'll hopefully see most of the stuff that I've got here. We'll, we'll have a close look at everything that's on the back wall, the side wall, <laughs> the, the other wall, <laughs> in the control room and downstairs and some at home as well, okay? So, yeah, we'll try and get through certainly the interesting stuff, which is most of it. Well, I think so anyway. Right, let's start, let's start with this. There's a gap on the wall. This has been hung on the wall for the last couple of years, and it is my it's a Gibson Custom Art and Historic. That's what they called the custom shop back when this was made in 2006. This is a, obviously a 64 reissue. I think it's a 64. They might have called it a 63. But a 63, 64 reissue. SG standard. I forgot. I nearly called it a Les Paul. No, it's a Gibson SG standard, isn't it? With the, the Maestro wiggle stick. Yeah, that is, um, this is a lovely thing. Now, it's a really lovely thing, actually. You'll note the funny, well, the sort of quite faded. It almost looks like it, oh, is it a walnut, or whatever they would call it? No, it's definitely cherry. Look, you see the back? The front's heavily faded. It was like that when I bought it. Um, and I think it had maybe been hanging in a shop window or something for a very long time. I don't know why I bought this used from Guitar Guitar in Camden Town in the old London. Used to work up there for Comedy Central and they had a place at Camden Lock. 
I was always in guitar, guitar in Camden, and I wandered in one day, and there was a there was a Marshall Blues Breaker amp, a used one, pretty tatty. Downstairs, we'll have a look at that later. Anyway, I I thought, oh, well, that's nice. I fancied that, so I wanted to try it out, <laughs> and looking for a guitar to try it out with. This was hanging on the wall, used. So I thought, oh, that's a match made in heaven, and because of the fade in. I got it for a really good price. So I bought it, and, and I don't mind that it's faded at all, to be honest with you. It's, I'm just, what I'm going to do now while I'm talking is I'm going to unscrew the scratch plate because I don't know if I ha have ever taken this off, and I'll show you what the colour was. Ready? Ta-da! Look at that, wow. Ah, Jesus. That is some heavy fading. Wow. That really must have been, just must have been sitting in the sun for ages. Because also you can see the Gibson custom sticker or whatever it was on there, there's an oval. I hope, hopefully the cameras will pick that up. Not I'll try and do some B roll so you can see that. The the sticky stickiness, stickiness on the sticker is burnt onto the, the scratch plate and that, that's just not coming off. So I think I might get a new one of them at some point. But it's um well I suppose it's it's part of the guitar's story, isn't it, really? I like stuff like that. Let's put this back on. It's part of the story, isn't it? Yeah. I love it. Sounds great as well. Let's have a listen. Now this one here, I suppose other end of the the price spectrum range, this is a cheap Gibson. That's an oxymoron, isn't it? Well, when I bought this in 2013, it was a cheap Gibson. This is an SGJ. Okay, a Gibson SGJ. Uh, if you've got one, it, yeah, it doesn't look particularly like an SGJ because I've changed some bits on it. It originally had these black covered humbuckers, which are 490T and 490Rs. It had those, it had a PCB. That's the printed circuit board that they, you might not have seen one of these. I'll just show you that quickly. Um, rather than individual, they are individual parts, but they're all connected to a PCB, printed circuit board. There you go. And that, that goes in there like that. Or it comes out there like that in, in this case. And uh, yeah, the Bell End truss rod cover SGJ. That was on there. It also actually it also had um, black button tuners, I recall. I think they were the same type of tuners, these Cluson 
Gibson Deluxe Keystone tuners, I think they call these, with black buttons, but I changed those as well. Um, and I put a pit guard in it, it comes without a pit guard, well, it came without a pit guard. So yeah, quite modified, I haven't touched the neck and the body, I haven't touched the bridge or the tailpiece, I don't think. Really nice guitar that. Now I paid £399 for this. It's a Gibson USA and I paid £399 for that in 2013. And it's actually a brilliant guitar. It's weird. The decal, the logo is bigger for some reason than any other Gibson logo, which is a bit weird. But mm. um, And it's got 24 frets. Count them. Uh, and it sounds, well, it sounds great now. I think um, well, it sounded great when it, to start with, to be honest with you. But I didn't really like the look. It looked a bit, you know, a bit metal for me. Um, I think this is now a burst bucker. I can't, I, burst bucker, I can't remember which number, but I've put a burst bucker in the neck. And this is a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge, uh, but I can't, I'm not absolutely certain. I've mucked around with it quite a lot, this guitar. Uh, and it's a great test mule. And it's one of my favourite SGs, funnily enough, for playing. You can see the playing wear on it. Um, I mean, it's it's got that faded, I mean, you can see there's a fair bit of wear on the neck, all of that I put on there. Some bits of wear. It's got that faded finish that they call faded. In fact, they've just released a new range of Gibson faded, haven't they? But they used to do the cheap versions of SGs and Les Pauls as faded. Prior to that, there was this range, the SGJ. They did a Les Paul version of this as well, and they did the tributes and stuff like that. So, um, But anyway, that is my 2013... SGJ um, and well one of the last of the affordable Gibsons yeah nice guitar now the first SG that I ever bought uh, was in about was about 1979 yeah I'm that old I bought my first Gibson and it was an SG and the model was a SG 200 uh, and it was made in around about 1972 73 um, that's long gone. I sold that years ago, years and years and years ago. However, um, a few years back, I was I was in Denmark Street in uh, London in One Joe Guitars, which is a wonderful shop. If you ever get a chance to visit Denmark Street, go and see One Joe's. They're really nice guys. Anyway, and I saw this Gibson SG two hundred, so I had to buy it. It it looks a little bit different to mine because it had been heavily modified <laughs> you'll see what i mean when i show you heavily modified um beyond well beyond words really it's um let me talk you through this okay i first it's very old you can see the the lacquer checking it's got weird checking on this almost to the point it looks like it's it, it kind of looks like it has been varnished it's so heavy and i'm not sure it hasn't i'm not sure <laughs> it's definitely what they call a player guitar this um but yeah now so this originally had two of these pickups i think these are single coil they're a very distinctive sound i'll show you in one minute these are very distinctive sound and i think they're single coils i don't think they're humbuckers it originally had two of those but somebody's put a humbucker in I haven't investigated what that is yet. It's got a patent number on the back. I know that. So I know it's not hugely valuable. Um, and they've put a badass style wrap over bridge. It originally would have had a lightning bar bridge. But they didn't stop there. They decided to make it a string through. So they drilled some holes in it, put the ferrules in, and they've put a little brass plate there. So... Uh, and this is slightly different. That will have had two little slider switches there, but it's got a three-way toggle, so they've obviously changed that. That was all done before I got it. So uh, I did change the knobs. They were some really weird old 
thing like oven knobs on it or something. So I put a couple of witch hat knobs on it. And uh, the only other thing I did, because it's got a brass nut on this, um, and it's got that, if you can see that angle, it's got the 70s headstock angle that Gibson adapted, changed in the, in the 70s. They put this really flat headstock and a big volute on the neck, probably as their reaction to all the neck breakages and stuff. They obviously eventually went back to their original styles. Really skinny neck on this, real proper skinny 70s Gibson neck. Uh, the other thing I did, so I put locking tuners on, simply because, because there's no, there's no brake angle on the headstock. The strings were just popping out of the nut all the time when I tried to play it. So I put these on because they were a bit shallower than the... It had the original, not the original tuners on this, but it had a set of shallows which were quite quite high posts. So I've swapped them. But um, it, it's quite a mutt. It's a real mutt. It was cheap. It was cheap. And... Um, it probably still is cheap, to be honest with you, but it's a, it's a fun thing. And it sounds like this. Strange coincidence, probably because I used to spend a lot of time in there, this is another One Joe Guitars discovery. 1969 SG Junior. I was delighted when I came across this in there. Not long actually after I found the SG200. But yeah, this, and again it's a player's guitar in the you know, it's, well, it's quite beaten up. It's been played, isn't it? You can see. Uh, not so much checking on the back, but you can see checking on the neck and quite a lot of, lots of proper authentic checking all over the front there. Original witch hat knobs, I believe. All the wiring's original. Actually, they told me that they didn't think the pickup was original. They thought it had been replaced, but I had a look and it doesn't look like it had been tampered with. It's got all the proper copper shielding inside this that they used to put in Gibsons in the 60s. Obviously, original scratch plates, you can see. 
Yes. It's got a story, isn't it? It's lovely. Non-original tuners. I put these on there. I have got the originals there in the case, but they were a bit knackered. So I replaced these with um, authentic Gibson replacements. Gibson Delight. They are. I think I did put proper Gibson. I was just reading that. Sorry. I was <laughs> Gibson Deluxe. Yeah, 1969. It's got the... If you know your SGs, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's got the very weird heel. And no brakes, as far as I can tell. I've put a, a, a black light on it and it all looks solid. It's, it's had bits of... It's had stuff touched up and that, I think, but not... I don't know, you know, I can't say for certain if it's... It's the sort of price you go, OK, it's a player's guitar. I can... It's an honest guitar as far as I'm concerned. It's not trying to be anything that it's not. It looks like it's got the original frets on it. They're very... They're quite wide and flat. It plays great. Again, it's got a real skinny neck. It's quite a thing. It's another, it's another affordable vintage, or it was when I bought it, again, not so many years ago. It was under two grand, this. And now I see them advertised for like five grand in worse condition than this, so the world's gone mad, to be honest with you. It's not for sale. I don't have the original. You can see these three holes, which they call those snake bites, don't they? That would have been a short Maestro Vibrola. Uh, which I don't have. Um, but there you go. I'm not worried. It's, it's a thing. That's that one. This one here is a, uh, well, it's a custom guitar handmade by the French luthier, Loic Le Pape, Loic Le Pape, and this is what he calls the Steel G Kid. And of course, as you can see, it's a, it's a junior. I'll put a link to his website in the description box. Check it out. He makes some outstanding pieces of art which is what this is it's made out of steel there is a film on this channel about this guitar i'll put a link in the description box check it out but yeah he makes these things so i, I contacted him some years back what does it say 2000 it wasn't that long ago 2018 yeah five years ago and said so can you make me an sg junior vintage white he distresses all his guitars they got lovely necks. It's a little bit heavier than a wooden one. It sounds outstanding. It's got a Kent Armstrong P90 on this. In this, on this, both work. Yeah, and fellow more palaguer, make love not war. Yeah, I mean it. There you go. That's Milowi Clapape. Beautiful guitar, work of art, and you'll have noticed that hanging 
in the corner there. Ever since day one, pretty much, I think. up this part one with this which is a SG standard just a bog standard Gibson SG standard from 2010 this one when they were still relatively affordable I bought this used this was a bargain I paid 500 pounds for this I think not that long ago so yeah it's amazing it's amazing how prices have gone up you know um, but yeah, lovely thing. I added these pickup rings um, because of the angle of the strings. I don't know if you can see that. Hang on, let me just try and pack it in that camera. Well, anyway, what tends to happen is the pickups sit at an angle, which always annoyed me. So I tried to put these pickup rings on to, to try and flatten them. It hadn't really worked, to be honest with you, and I think it looks horrible. So... At some point, I'm going to get another scratch plate and just stick it back to standard. Standard pickups, standard wiring. I haven't messed with this. Had a big old ding on the headstock there, which was part of the reason it was cheap, I think. Nice neck on this. Sounds great. So Gibson SG. It's a, you know, beautiful thing. And um, look, you know, oh, look, hello. Where's all the neck dive gone? <laughs> There's no neck dive there, is there? No, I can't get it to neck dive. Look, <laughs> I'm, I'm holding it by the strap button. I think neck dive is, it's a thing sometimes, I suppose. I think it's exacerbated, that's a good word, by heavy Grover tuners, which this hasn't got. This has got the Gibson Deluxe tuners. So anyway, you know, if you want to know, you know, every time I make a film about SGs, people go, does it neck dive? I don't notice. I don't notice, to be honest with you. But I have noticed this. It doesn't. <laughs> so, um, 
honestly, if you get used to SGs, the pluses completely outweigh this mythical neck dive thing. And look, I know some do. If you're playing a gig and you know you want to let go, sometimes they do. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But what I am saying, it's not a thing that every SG does, okay? So stop using that as an excuse not to get an SG because you've heard that they neck dive, all right? Find out for yourself. You might be surprised. And uh, the plus is all of this upper fret access is well worth the trade-off. In my humble opinion, there you go. That's part one of some SGs. Next week, <laughs> coming up next week, folks. Now, look what we've got here. Uh, look, it's one of these old, it's like a toy case, this, isn't it? What do they call them? Crocodile cases or alligator cases? Anyway, yeah, this next one came in this. Oh, blimey. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to do it up so you get a proper idea of what we're dealing with here. Uh, it's, it's an original case that they used to supply with these guitars. Um, it's a bit worse for wear this. Let me get the guitar out and uh, show you what it is and then we'll get rid of this before it. So there you go, more coming up next week and over the coming months, we'll get deeper into the collection. We'll look at the Telecasters. I've got some offsets. I've got some other vintage guitars that you haven't seen. I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. So, and yeah, as I said, some amps as well. So that's all for this week. Thanks for joining us. Come back, same time, same place, next week. Let's do it again. Cheers for now. Ta-da.